What's up, it's Marco back on This Week in Soccer, where we talk about all things U.S. Men's National Team. Man, we had a decent week this week. Some transfer news is coming out, and we're starting to see how some playing time is going to be arranged for these players, how they're going to be playing for uh, their clubs this week, and uh, yeah. So just starting things off with the transfers, uh, Anthony Robinson, a little bit of news on him. Still no updates on the Man City and Wolves fronts, but uh, now Bordeaux seem to be interested in him, and yeah, it seems like it'd be a decent move. I mean... Going to France, that's never a bad thing. Go to developing players. Uh, obviously, it's stepped down from Man City. Probably stepped down from Wolves as well. But I think playing time would be a lot more possible there. So it could be a decent move. Uh, next, Cameron Carter-Vickers. No definitive updates on him. But it does seem like Newcastle is leading the race for him. I think this is good because it definitely shows there is Premier League interest in him. And, uh, yeah, they missed out on uh, Ajer from Celtic. And Celtic's another team interested in him. And they just lost the center back. So... Uh, Newcastle, Celtic, Bournemouth probably still want him, though they did get a new manager, so I'm not sure how much they want him still. But, yeah, Newcastle seems to be a good location for Cameron Carter-Bickers. Worked out pretty well for DeAndre Yedlin. He got a good amount of playing time there. And then uh, John Lugabusio, I mean, by everything I can find, he's transferred to Venezia, but it hasn't been announced yet. It'll probably be announced by the time this goes up, my luck. But, yeah. Seems to be going to Serie A. Really like that move, and hopefully he can do, continue to do well in the Gold Cup. Now, uh, a little bit on the guys who aren't leaving front. Uh, Josh Sargent, he's playing for Werder Bremen and Bundesliga 2. Um, he's actually been playing on the wing for them, and it's uh, not the greatest situation for him from a U.S. Men's National Team perspective. He's a pretty low level in the Bundesliga 2, and he's not playing his preferred position. And if he doesn't get something worked out soon... Uh, his World Cup qualifier stats could be in doubt, and I don't think his World Cup status is yet, because, I mean, if Bremen wins promotion, then he'll be playing Bundesliga for uh, before the World Cup starts, which, because, remember, it's uh, in November in 2022, so I don't think long-term it's too much of a concern, but for the short term, it's looking pretty bad. And then Matt Miazga is still at Chelsea. I can't say how long, because... Uh, Thomas Tuchel said this week that some players want to leave. Matt Miazga said earlier in the summer that he wants to leave, but there are there's not even a rumor about where he would go. The club that loaned him last year aren't interested, and uh, he's on the bench, and he looks like he's going to be playing today. So, yeah, Matt Miazga might be playing at Chelsea. Okay, next, uh, we're going to look at uh, some playing time things with some people, and uh, Ethan Horvath is probably the main one. Um, in a Nottingham Forest, uh, Nottingham Post report, it said the boss said that it's uh, Samba's job to lose. Samba's the incumbent goalkeeper at Nottingham Forest, so not the greatest situation for Ethan Horvath. He will have to play for his time, and if he doesn't get that starting spot, then man's back to square one. But yeah, I mean he's there to compete for the spot. Forest did bring him in, so by all means he's got a good chance of winning it. Uh, I know that there's a good amount of cup competitions. So the opportunities are going to be there, but uh, and even more that, he's got to make that work. Uh, next, Owen Ottawasawi, he's still playing in friendlies for Wolves. He's coming off the bench, so I'm not sure if he'll be uh, regularly in the first team, but it seems like he'll, he's at least going to be still be on the bench for, well, if they keep the huge benches like they have been. If it goes back to a seven bench, I'm not sure, but you know, Owen Ottawasawi is still playing for Wolves. Uh, Brian Reynolds playing for Roma. That's good to see. He seems to be impressing Jose Mourinho. And if he continues that, more playing time for him, that's definitely a good thing. And then uh, Chris Richards, he's this is probably the biggest one. He picked out an injury, and he's going to be missing the friendlies. And the friendlies were the chances that he really had to impress his boss. And, uh, man, that's the reason why he wasn't called up to the Gold Cup, and now he's just missing them. I think he had one where he wasn't performing well, and... Now he's not playing them. I think at this point he's just returned to Hoffenheim. Make sure you get some playing time and just continue to develop because right now I don't think staying at Bayern is the best option for him. And the last thing is Tyler Boyd is in for a tough start as Joe Burrow will not be playing the preseason, making his uh, chemistry not good. Oh, shit. Sorry, wrong guy. Okay, uh, next in the injury news. Well, I mentioned uh, Chris Richards picked up an injury, but that seems to just be a knock. Uh, Yanis Musa, his injury looked pretty bad. He was on crutches. Uh, Soccer America said he'll be out three to six weeks, which is uh, the best uh, outlook that I could find. But that's the most recent one, so I'm hoping that's true. But it was not looking great. I heard some people say he'll be out till January. I'm going to be sticking with the Soccer America one, but uh, not too sure. 
Uh, Giovanni Reina picked up a knock. He's just missing some preseason games. I think he'll be fine. Uh, Giandre Yedlin, he uh, – can you say that now? Uh, he got the virus, and he missed Galatasaray, essentially getting knocked out of the Champions League, losing uh, 5-1 to PSV in the first leg of uh, Champions League qualifiers. And in good news, Caden Clark is back in the starting lineup after his uh, append- appendectomy, I think. I think it was his appendix. Okay, now you have a couple guys who played this week. Mark McKenzie, he had a very good performance for Gank. He's uh, starting for them, which is good because he wasn't a starter last year. Really good to see Mark McKenzie show out. If he's starting this year, that's a great thing. Brendan Aronson also started in a win. A uh, bit of a doubt because a new boss there at RB Salzburg because uh, Jesse Mark moved to RB Leipzig. But, uh, yeah, Brendan Aronson still starting, still playing. They got themselves a win. And the friendlies, uh, West McKinney, very good friendly performance, scored a goal. Um, he, I think he was playing in a deeper position. I mentioned him playing a 10 earlier, but I feel like he was playing the 8 again. He had, seems to really be impressing Allegri. He said he wanted 10 goals from him. Uh, for FC Dallas players, Justin Shea made the MLS player MLS team of the week with his performance. And uh, new addition to this, uh, Ricardo Pepe. I'm adding him. He's been playing so well. He picked up a hat trick. And he's also named in the MLS Team of the Week. Great performance by him. He's been linked with Bologna. I think that's uh, too early of a move for him. I'd like to see him at least finish out the season with FC Dallas. But uh, great performance by Ricardo Pepe, and he's someone I'm really looking out for now. And another guy I'm adding is uh, Jordan Sibichu or p Uh He scored and assisted in a Swiss win. I'm not going to say their club name because uh, I don't know if that's going to get picked up by anything. But, yeah, he's doing well in the Swiss League. And uh, Bill Hamid kept another clean sheet. The MLS. He's probably the fourth best goalkeeper right now, and I still really like him as a player. He's probably below Matt Turner, below Zach Steffen, but if Ethan Horvath doesn't get consistent playing time, I could see Bill Hamid getting into uh, the squads for uh, World Cup qualifying, maybe the World Cup. Also, I'm going to be halting coverage of David Ochoa, CJ Dos Santos, and uh, Chitaro Dudze due to uh, Ochoa not committing to the national team. He's still going back and forth on USA and Mexico, so he's going to hold off on that for now. Uh, C.J. Dos Santos, not close to the Benfica first team. And uh, Jitaro Dunze, aside from me not being able to pronounce his name, he's far away from the first team. And the other thing is, uh, Cade Quell was called up for U.S. men's national team practice, but uh, he later returned to San Jose as Paul Ariola re- uh, recovered from his injury. But, yeah, it's good to see Cade Quell just in the mix for the USA national team. He's really on that Greg Burhalter's radar right now. Last thing I want to talk about is the women's uh, the women's national team in the Olympics, uh, they drew 1-1 with Australia. They advanced to the knockout round. They will face the Netherlands in a rematch of the World Cup final after they won the World Cup against them last year. And, and they're not looking too good right now. Their offense is looking uh, very stagnant. They only scored against New Zealand. I mean, 6-1 game, but I covered that game. They were not playing that well. So, yeah, I'm not too excited about the women's team right now. Things aren't looking too good for them, but... Uh, you know, you know how good this team is. I mean, like Alex Morgan, Meg Rapino, Carly Lloyd, we know the performances they have in them, and the talent on that team is probably a step above everybody else. It's just they seem to not be in it mentally, which I can understand because of uh, the lockdowns that they're forced to be under, uh, maybe even the pressure that they face. But uh, you really want to see them performing better and uh, really hoping that they can. I mean, this – it's probably the last international tournament of a good amount of that team. Uh, Sarban, Lloyd, maybe Rapino, Like, all of them, they're coming towards the end of the career, and hopefully they can get motivated and start to win. Well, that's all I've talked about this week. Uh, yeah, it's a good week. I'm really hoping some of those moves will finally materialize. And, yeah, that's all I've talked about. See you.